Hello folks, Israel Epstein here today with you. We're going to do a, a little review on the Mini 14 by Ruger. So here I have for you a Mini 14 that's kind of a tactical version with the ATI Strike Force stock. Now I do not have a flash hider on mine or a, you know, compensator or anything like that a muzzle brake but uh, I think you've probably seen Leroy's and I'll roll some footage of that with the muzzle brake on the end but I wanted to just give you a, uh, a kind of a more thorough review we have now been shooting our mini 14s for a couple of years now a lot of rounds um, I think through this tactical model right here I have had a good thousand rounds through it at least because we did a lot of run and gunning and did some varmint shooting and target shooting and working up loads on it so it's had a number of rounds through it so uh, we're, we're gonna do a, a review on this thing and I wanted to cover a couple of topics I'll do a little bit of history of the rifle um, use potential uses uh, what kind of accessories are available for this thing um, the coolness factor, whether it has any, I think it does have some. Um, also we'll talk about firepower, the accuracy of the rifle, uh, its reliability, which is good, and, um, and then of course its availability and purchase price, if you can find one today. Um, so let's start with a little bit of history on this weapon. This thing was originally designed by uh, L.J. Sullivan and Bill Ruger uh, between 67 and 73, and it came out as a production gun as a ranch rifle in 1973. Now, the, there's not been very many changes to this thing uh, over the, the very many years that it's been made. One of the, the only real serious uh, manufacturing change that has taken place is the barrel profile and it looks like that came into play at uh, between 2007 2008 when uh, you know people had complained for a long time about the potential accuracy problems with a Ruger Mini 14 and that it was not the most accurate rifle that you could get and I would have to definitely agree with that it's not an accuracy rifle uh, it doesn't mean you can't get good accuracy out of it it's just not built for that um, so what is it built for what is the primary use of this gun uh, and that's where we'll get into a little bit of usage discussion I suppose that with the gun you know when, when it originally came out it was a ranch rifle okay this is something that's a beater rifle that you throw in the back of your truck or you you know keep next to the door or something if you live on a ranch or you live on a farm or you live out in the woods or something you critter control you want to kill uh you know gophers and squirrels and stuff that you know badgers stuff that might be uh coyotes you know dogs stray mangy dogs and feral cats that are trying to get your chickens or eat your vegetables in your garden or whatever uh, you know it was made for that purpose but you want to notice that this thing is actually built on an M14 or an M1 style rotating bolt uh, gas piston uh, configuration and it's uh, inherently built off of a military weapon the M14 or the M1 so it has some military lineage uh, but was also just used as a ranch gun a handy rifle really if you will with a, a more firepower than a 22 but not quite as powerful as a 308 uh, so you don't want to you know be that's 308 is kind of overkill for killing critters and rodents and these you know the the at the time wildcat cartridges like a 243 or a 270 weren't quite so popular but a 223 was ubiquitous meaning it was everywhere and you could easily get ammo for it uh, now 
one of the things you'll you'll note about these guns is it has a wild chamber w uh, y l d e i don't know if that stands for a person it might but uh, the the throat in the bore is actually capable of using both 223 Remington and 5.56 by 45 military rounds. So it will cycle and use uh, different types of ammo. And if it's you know either 223 or 556, uh, it'll shoot both of them. Now, which one is more accurate? Good question, and we'll discuss a little bit of that when we get to our accuracy discussion on this rifle. Now, this one, as I said started off life as a regular ranch rifle and I took the original stock off and put in the ATI Strike Force stock with the collapsible butt and the adjustment. Uh, the cheek piece is adjustable with the uh, pistol grip and uh, I, this I've got two of them and I'll show you the other one in a moment and this one is carrying a, <clears throat> a 30 round clip right now So this one is set up as a tactical gun and I use this one for running gunning and stuff like that. And then I'll show you the other one. This one is the one that I use as a ranch rifle. I, you can hunt with this thing. Uh, now a lot of states are not going to allow you to hunt with a 30 round magazine. So you have to use a 10 round clip. If you're gonna hunt in a lot of states, you need to have a 10 round clip on it. Uh, but I use high capacity clips for everything, or magazines, excuse me. I don't, uh, I do have a 10 round clip, a couple of them, in case I wanted to hunt with this thing. But I have a bolt action rifle that's really accurate for hunting, so this one really wouldn't be used for hunting for me. And I don't have critters because I live in the city, kinda, uh, or outskirts of the city and this one is configured as more of a sporter for me. Uh, this is the one that I use for my target shooting and uh, to do accuracy testing. I have tested both of these weapons to uh, test them for their accuracy. They're very, very similar. There's no real noticeable differences in either of them and uh, as far as accuracy is concerned. And then if you look, uh, this is the original Tupperware Hogue style stock that came with the rifle that I took off and replaced. Uh, so let's get into a little bit of the uses of this thing. Now you talk, we talked briefly about the, um, it's not a battle rifle, but more of a ranch gun, but it is built, like I said, on the pedigree of an M14, which is a battle rifle. Now, a lot of people talk about uh, end of days and without rule of law and uh, poop hitting the fan and such. So, uh, you know, is this thing an actual go to war, protect your life kind of weapon? It certainly could be. It certainly could be. Uh, it holds enough rounds, it has enough firepower, and the round is a very accurate round. So I don't see why not, frankly. It's, uh, can you do suppressive fire with this thing? Uh, well, it's not fully automatic, but you can, <laughs> I have and you can bump fire this thing to get it to produce a lot of rounds. Um, and since they put the heavier profile barrel on there, it doesn't heat up quite as badly and it, the accuracy was therefore improved also. So could you lay down some suppressive fire with this thing? Sure you could, absolutely. You could absolutely lay down suppressive fire with this thing. So now, would, would you choose to do that? Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, as, as opposed to say a, uh, an AR-15, well, I will talk with you briefly about an AR-15. Now, you, you guys know that I have not shown any videos of us shooting AR-15s. And I'll just give you a little bit of background about... I have shot an AR-15. I have shot them several times. And I, I like the gun. It's a, good, it's a good gun. It's proven itself to be reliable. And... Uh, if you get one that is just a you know a 799 799 dollar special 
a uh, Wyndham weaponry or a, um, a sporter tactical uh, or an optics ready carbine or something like that it's going to shoot about as well as this maybe a little bit better now if you're going to get a free floating barrel with a match chamber and a match grade barrel with its fully floated uh, you're talking about a high-end AR-15 okay that's fifteen hundred seventeen hundred two thousand dollars with maybe a gas piston uh, then you're gonna have minute of angle or one inch at 100 yards or one inch at night you know 100 meters uh, then you're getting into more accuracy potential but you're gonna spend a lot more money uh, is it more reliable as a battle weapon um, I don't think so frankly I know that the AR-15 is incredibly reliable but I also know that this is incredibly reliable so we'll talk about um, you know reliability in a minute but um, so if you wanted to defend the family defend the homestead with this thing you absolutely could absolutely it will hold enough rounds got enough firepower now let's talk a little bit about the accuracy on this thing this thing does have out of the box uh, I would suggest to you two inches at 100 yards if you are holding steady now if you're in a battle situation and we've run you know run and gun drills where you get the heart rate up and you you know you're breathing heavy and kind of winded and adrenaline is up uh, you it's hard you'll be hard-pressed to get uh, good accuracy out of any gun in that situation but if you can place careful shots and control your breathing and trigger control you can absolutely get um, two inches I would say out of a stock rifle using um, just regular full metal jacket 55 grain which is basically a military type round with the full metal jacket 55 grains uh, of jacketed rounds you're gonna get about two inches uh, to your group at 100 yards so that is typical of a battle rifle so however if you want to um, if you want to do a little bit of upgrading and the only real way that I can see to upgrade these things is to because uh, you it doesn't have all of the interchangeable parts that an AR-15 has so that you can accurize it really there is an AccuStrut that they make for these things and there's also a barrel tuner uh, people have done some extraordinary things to these weapons to try and get them to shoot really well but if you're looking for an accuracy gun I wouldn't recommend a Mini-14 but if you want to use it to kill critters or possibly defend the homestead or you know by a band of rampaging weirdos in your area then you would you could definitely use this but you're gonna get two inches at a hundred yards but if you wanted to use hand loads, now that is definitely one way that you can get much better accuracy out of this thing. When I say much better, you can pretty much cut it in half, I would suggest. And I can roll some footage there to show you that with a hand load, um, using say Varget powder and some 55 grain VMAX bullets that are um, uh, explosive style rounds, that are fragmenting rounds that are used for varmints, uh, those are incredibly ac those are incredibly accurate uh, in this gun when I say incredibly accurate I'm talking about one inch to 1.5 inches one and a half inch groups uh, this gun and the other one like it will do something pretty consistently on the targets that you've probably seen in my videos it'll put in a three shot group let's say it'll put two two bullets right next to each other and the third is about an inch away seems very consistent for both of these weapons uh, it'll put two right next to each other and then the third shot is about an inch away it just does that with three shot groups it's kind of a weird anomaly with this thing I've never except in a few couple of instances was probably by accident where you'll get all three bullets right together um, that happens occasionally and occasionally they'll open up a little bit but the majority of the time if you're using hand loads with this thing it will actually put two right next to each other and one about an inch away so I'm gonna call that one and just over one inch gun which is uh, certainly plenty accurate for um, 
for closer range varmints or a go to battle weapon. It's certainly accurate enough. Now I have also hit, clay, uh, you know, four inch uh, clay pigeons at 300 yards and 400 yards. I've shot milk jugs at 400 yards with this thing. Um, now just remember that a, a, a one inch gun at 400 yards is gonna be a four inch gun. So if you got a target that's four inches at 400 yards, you're probably gonna hit it, but you've gotta shoot within minute of, anchor, minute, minute of angle uh, or MOA, or you're not going to hit it. So if you got a six-inch target at 400 yards, you got a two inches of wiggle room there. So yeah, it, it will shoot MOA, but you got to be a careful shooter with this thing. So accuracy with hand loads is actually not too bad, not too bad at all. But if you're just using a bulk full metal jacket ammo, you're going to get about two inches, okay, possibly three if you're not being careful. Now, it, that's certainly good enough for uh, going to war, certainly good enough to defend the homestead. Uh, as far as um, defending the homestead, you want to watch out for overpenetration. If you're using a, say, a 69 grain Sierra Match King or a 75 grain Amax or uh, something like that, it's going to penetrate pretty handily. It's going to blow right through a bunch of stuff and I think we've got some footage of these uh, those full metal jackets uh, going through a brick wall uh, or through a you know six inch uh, cinder block. It'll go right through it. Um, now a fragmenting round like a VMAX would be uh, the choice to use if you were concerned about over penetration because that will actually um, hit and fragment. So if you were shooting bad guys in an urban environment uh, and you had to worry about over penetration going through walls and going through different stuff, uh, you would probably want to use some fragmenting rounds. Uh, you can also get um, the AP or armor piercing rounds, which is an SS-109 or an uh, XM-855. Uh, those are actually I've and I've done hand loads with those as well and they're not too bad not too, not too bad as far as accuracy is concerned with the uh, the XM uh, 855 but those are steel penetrators they got a steel slug in them that are made for penetrating uh, thick objects and it will work pretty well so um, it wallops steel pretty good at three four hundred yards um, but if you're looking about over penetrating just use a varmint load uh, you'd recommend loading them yourself though because the varmint rounds at this time as of um, you know September 2013 the price on those varmint loads is uh, really expensive they're like almost two dollars a round now if you want to buy a box of Hornaday uh, VMAX bullets uh, you know loaded up and ready to go you're gonna spend thirty nine dollars uh, to get quality ammo for this thing and even the um, bulk factory ammo, or the, the bulk ammo, military surplus or Lake City uh, current production is going to be pretty expensive. Um, just, a, just a year ago, it was um, before the Newtown school shooting, just a year ago, you could buy a thousand rounds of, um, of uh, just 55 grain full metal jackets uh, for 285. I think was one of the best prices we got at the time was just under $300. Um, it's much more expensive than that now. It's almost a thousand dollars for a thousand rounds. So you're paying a dollar a piece for these rounds. Uh, so it's not cheap. And also the price of the guns have gone up, but we'll talk about that in just a minute with the uh, prices on these things. Now. As far as um, the accessories, this is a highly, a, a pretty highly accessorized gun, not like an AR-15. Okay, you can get different stocks for it. Um, you can buy magazines. That was that's a good thing because Ruger for a long time was not actually making high capacity magazines, or what I would refer to as a normal capacity magazine for a tactical type weapon. Uh, Ruger was kind of playing the politically correct game for a little while and didn't make any uh, high capacity magazines. But when tactical shooting and uh, you know competitions and the craze came about for uh, tactical comps and tactical shooting, 
uh, they saw the market and handwriting on the wall and decided to make some. Now this one is actually a Ruger Steel magazine and these are going to be more expensive than say the, uh, the Tapco that is on this one. That is a polymer uh, magazine. They hold, they're both 30 round magazines. But the, the Tapco is going to be considerably less expensive. You can pick up a Tapco mag for 20 bucks, but a Ruger magazine that's all steel is going to cost you about eh, 30 bucks, sometimes as much as 40 if you're not shopping around. But uh, so the magazines have become much more readily available. Um, now, for example, I'm going to set this one down this one here these Tapco magazines I have found to be uh, very reliable I haven't had any problems with these Tapco mags now what you'll notice on these on the back side I'll kind of hold that up there I'm not sure if you can see that very well you see that hole right there that's actually um, plastic it's polymer and that hole will kind of waller itself out a little bit. And the newer Tapco style magazines actually have a steel clip, a stainless steel clip that is right there that will not waller out. You can see that that one is starting to uh, kind of get wallered out and worn out around that ring. But the uh, those steel ones from Ruger obviously are not going to have that problem. Now this one, even though it is wearing out a little bit and it's had you know at least a thousand rounds through it. Uh, it still functions properly and it hasn't worn itself out to where it won't function. But, like I said, the newer Tapco magazines will actually have a steel clip there. Well, somebody is calling on the phone. Sorry about that. Business interrupt us. Uh, well, let me check my notes. We were talking about the um, different magazines for like the Tapco stock and the original Ruger uh, um, magazines. So one of the uh, other things about accessories on these things is um, unfortunately the, the ring system on these is proprietary. So you're not gonna be able to just buy a flat Picatinny style rail for this thing. And I've always wanted to have a Picatinny style rail. And yes, I know they make a Picatinny style rail and I have one. Um, that actually clips to the side into this clip space right here and has these two stabilizers and then it rides up above there it's crap it's just junk um, it will not hold steady you can lock tight it torque it down it's gonna come unzipped this thing produces a lot of vibration and if you're trying to use a Picatinny rail on this thing it's just not gonna work my opinion my experience so I would not recommend it I have one I have a high quality one I had a cheap one set it back got a higher quality one it's just not high quality enough so the best you're gonna do is get the original Ruger steel rings so they don't have aluminum style rings to cut your weight down you're gonna have to go with the original Ruger steel rings they have them in low and high medium this one is a medium ring, 30 millimeter, that is holding in a, 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 a Vortex Strike Fire red dot sight. Uh, and then the other one, this one is sporting some original Ruger steel rings just for the regular style scope. But yeah, if you want to get a if you want to get a, uh, a Picatinny style rail for this thing, they just don't make one as far as I'm concerned as of now that is actually usable I, I don't believe that they do so that's not something that you're you're gonna get on this thing unfortunately it's just not gonna work so forget it you can't have it <laughs> but yeah the original um, the original Ruger has steel it's all steel and that hole is not gonna wear out but again, the Tapco ones, the newer ones, watch that. You can buy the cheaper ones that are, um, you know, not the Gen 2. Uh, and they're like 20 bucks, so that's not too bad. But the proprietary steel rings, 
It's okay. You can get all kinds of aftermarket uh, or original Ruger parts to repair and replace worn out parts, but um, the accessorizing is fairly limited to stocks, magazines. Um, the Harris does make a bipod adapter for a Mini 14, so the, the fact that it's been around since 1974 has obviously made certain accessories available, but it's not highly accessorizable like an AR-15 is. Um, so the coolness factor, is this thing a cool gun? Well, not exactly. If you're looking to be totally, if you're looking to be totally cool, I would probably go with an AR-15 because it just looks more tactical. Now you can make it look tactical by putting an ATI strike fire stock on it and just sticking a 30 round magazine with a, uh, you know, a vortex style scope. But is that so totally cool? Yeah, it looks a little bit mean, but it's not quite as tactical and cool as a uh, an AR-15. Looks better than a. To me, I I have always n not liked the look of an AK-47. That's just me. I don't. I think they look ugly. But you also have a Mini 30 which shoots those uh, 762 by 39 AK-47 rounds. So you can actually get one of these mini 30s that shoots AK-47 bullets if you want more firepower that is accurate uh, out to about 300 yards and is a that's a pretty deadly bullet an AK-47 round is pretty deadly. So if you want more firepower, you can um, step it up to a uh, 762 round for an AK. Now, um Talking briefly about reliability, okay, and this is kind of where I'll probably get to wrapping this up. The reliability on these guns has been, frankly, phenomenal. I have had, um, like I said, a thousand or more, 1,500 rounds, almost 2,000 rounds through these guns, and there, this thing has only uh, had a failure to feed, as far as I can remember, like once. And that was when I was doing a hand load testing because I had, when we do um, the optimum charge weight testing on all of our rifles here for hand loads, we start off with a lower grain, like let's say with a, you know, benchmark powder or a Varget powder that we're loading different rounds in this thing. We'll start off at say 23.5 grains and work our way up to 25. That's just an example, by the way. Uh, on the lower grain charge, it will not have quite enough oomph to cycle the bolt. So you're, you, I actually had a failure to feed, I think one time, when I was um, doing optimum charge weight testing, and that's just because it was a low powered charge in the, in the bullet that was not powerful enough to cycle the action really well. And it did, you know, flobble just a little bit. You like that word, flobble? So uh, as far as that, otherwise though, just shooting bulk 55 grain ammo and all of my other hand loads, it never fails to feed. It always feeds and I, it doesn't jam. Um, now Leroy did try um, early on when he got his Mini 14, he was using that cheap ammo from Herders, which was a steel cased, uh, you know, or Wolf, the steel cased ammo. Don't do it it's not worth the savings because what'll happen is exactly what happened to Leroy and that that lacquer that they put on a steel cased um, Russian military round will actually heat up and you will get cases stuck in your chamber and then you got to get a cleaning rod and jam it down there or if it's really stuck you send it to the gunsmith to get that stupid stuck case out of there but if you're using brass cases just regular loads it's going to fire and it's just going to continue to fire i've done bump fires with it it just goes it just goes and goes and goes and it doesn't stop until you run out of bullets so as far as reliability is concerned on both of these guns frankly incredible it hasn't had any problems none at all now you know like a Ruger 1022 that's gonna hang up just because it's a 22 rifle it's gonna hang up you know one round every 20 or 30 rounds is gonna jam or something stovepipe uh, but this just doesn't do it it actually just keeps on shooting 
So that is one of the reasons that I think it could potentially do well in a, uh, you know, cover your butt, you know, poop hits the fan without rule of law, protect the homestead type situation is it's just incredibly reliable. So uh, I think that has to do especially with the, um, the M1, M14 style of, uh, of uh, action and rotating, you know, gas operated bolt that it has. It's just a time tested and proven commodity that this action works and this bolt and carrier system works very, very well. Um, now I know an AR-15 is also, you know, very, uh, very reliable as long as it is adjusted correctly, you know, with the buffer tube and, uh, you know, the carrier group and uh, all that stuff. There's a lot of things, the ejector, a lot of things can go wrong on an AR-15, a lot, uh, especially if you're building one yourself. Um, and also some of the factory builds. I mean, you can watch the Nut and Fancy uh, channel, you know, to see he does a lot of AR stuff and run and guns and stuff like that. And you will see some wobbles here and there with just not feeding correctly, failure to feed, failure to load, you know, failure to go into battery, uh, just different problems. A Mini 14 does not have that problem. You're probably because you can't tinker with it. You just can't, you can't screw it up. There's nothing that you can modify or change in this action and bolt system uh, that's going to do anything. You can't modify it. So it works and it continues to work because you can't screw with it. So that's a, that's a good thing in my book and I'll tell you why I think, uh, you know, I prefer something like this. Um, you may have already noticed that I make my own music for the show uh, and I have a background uh, for about 17 years as an audio engineer uh, working in recording studio. So, um, for example, uh, in a recording studio, there's always been a big debate about whether you should have analog gear or digital gear. Uh, like, do you like transistors or tubes, uh, MP3 players or a 10-inch uh, vinyl disc? Well, I've always been the one who says, give me a 10-inch vinyl disc, <laughs> give me a record player, <laughs> it's going to just sound, give me an 8-track it's going to sound warmer and fuzzier and sound better than a digital recording. I'm kind of thinking the same way about my guns, you know. It's uh, time tested, proven, it just works, and there's no sense in tinkering with it. Yes, there is better and faster and cheaper and lighter, but this thing works. Now, briefly, we'll talk about the price and availability. Um, I did some searching around. Uh, online I didn't go to a bunch of uh, gun stores or anything to you know see if they had any in stock at the local gun shops but um, online you used to be able to get these things left and right but right now they're kind of sparse if you can find one it's gonna be 900 950 especially if you want a tactical model like this with an ATI you know strike four stock and a 30 round clip it's gonna run you um, about 900 but uh, you know like Bud's gun shop and a couple others said you know our last price on these was $799 uh, well that's great but they don't have any in stock and if they did get some in stock they probably wouldn't be $799 all of the uh, fancy you know semi-automatic centerfire guns are just came up in price since people started hoarding them and you know getting them socked away for the end of the world or whatever it is that they're doing out there so unfortunately the cost of ammo and the cost of the gun has skyrocketed uh, in the last year because of the uh, gun grabbers and the uh, wacko politicians that don't know their butts from a hole in the ground, don't know anything about weapons, and uh, you know, what are you going to do? But this thing, as far as being available, it's kind of hard to find right now. You might have some in your local shop, but uh, as far as my recommendation, uh, I will give it a hearty thumbs up. This thing is actually pretty cool. It's got a lot of firepower. It's accurate enough to have some run and gun fun, do some target shooting, um, even some semi long range shooting at three or four hundred yards. I've even hit steel plates at uh, 500 yards with this thing, uh, 12 inch steel plate. And it uh, still hit pretty good, still hitting fairly solid and fairly hard at 500 yards. So you could do a, a good amount of damage to animals or people or whatever you want to mess up with this thing, you can do it. 
Uh, so this is, um, I hope you'll enjoy this video about the Mini 14. I have found these to be super awesome and if you can afford it and you can find one and you want a reliable semi-auto center, center fire gun with a uh, high magazine capacity and the ability to blow stuff up, a Mini 14 is a good idea. Again, thumbs up on the Mini 14. This is Israel Epstein signing out. Peace to you all.